Now we're back. Okay. Got this pushed in there. Pull that back out for a minute. Want to get in there for some grease and everything in here. It's easy to do that without not that having that piece in there. for that. Okay. Now we need to work on this piece here a little bit. Let's see. Leave those on there for now. Yeah, I gotta take them off. These are coming off. Makes a good mess there. We're not watching what I'm working on, are we? Okay, got that out of there. Okay, this has a push rod seal up in here. It's missing the rubber seal that goes in there. Appears to be uh, gone. So we got to come up with that part. So, not sure the condition of everything else in there either. Basically, this is the kit here. It has all the parts in here. That shows you how it's supposed to go together. So, pretty much, have to go and open these things up. This is probably my best bag. That's why it was sitting outside where I get to it. Okay, let's see what kind of a mess we got inside of this thing original military paper in here. Uh oh, yep. there was two rubbers in there, I thought there was. Okay, so that's everything out of the bag. Yep. So I thought they got a big rubber, small rubber, inner and outer. And here, The other parts. There you go, there's all the new pieces. So these have a little bit of cosmine on them, but that's pre lube. That's fine. Okay, so that's the whole system in there. Now, if you look at the paperwork here and try to interpret what the hell they're saying, it shows you all the parts go in there. So they even identify which ones are which. So, if you don't know what you're doing, you can always read that. Or just figure it out as you go. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Okay, there's our clip. There's the old parts coming out. There we go. So now all the junk's out of there. it out a little bit. Well, seems to be good in there. There's no rust or anything. So they had the big washer, small washer, spring, and the cup. So that's how they did it. So they left out the two rubbers. So they didn't have the rubbers in there. Let's see, we're gonna put that, I'm gonna put that over there. So we got all the same parts here, but we gotta put the rubbers in there. Now the small rubber goes on the inside. So they got the big spacer, the big rubber, the thin washer, the cup, and then the seal on the inside and the spring between the cup and the washer. So this is the outer one. 
You got the rubber goes in there. You got the thin washer. You got the spring. You got the cup. Oop. Just lost the other spacer. Cup goes in there. And this little small rubber goes inside the cup. So what this does is this hits against the end of the main shaft, which seals the end of the main shaft. The cup collapses it onto the push rod so it stays tight on the push rod. So as things wear, it's constantly putting a pressure toward the inside and toward the outside where it rubs. And this is a secondary seal way out here for both the OD and the ID. But there's no nothing to keep it tighter. You just just pressure against the clip. So that whole system all goes together like that inside your clutch gear. Now that's how it's supposed to be. Now if you put it in right now it makes it really hard to put the trap door on so we can wait. Or you can put it in right now it's easier to do it. Your choice. So I like doing it now. This little one will fit through. See, falls right through. Where's our push rod at? Uh, right here. This is our push rod. See, how it's got a tapered end on it. It goes in there like that. It makes it easier to go in. Yep, just like that. Okay, this one here goes in there like that. The only problem is when you squeeze on the outside, it gets tighter. So it'll get tighter. Okay, so I'm going to put the cut piece in first. Of course, it falls upside down. So if you use the assembly tool to put it in, put it down like it's supposed to. Springy dingy goes on top. Small washer. Big ass rubber. Of course, it's nice and hard for two reasons. One is it's cold, the other one is it's old. So, between cold and old, it doesn't want to go in. Ah, don't poke yourself. Just like that. See, you can't squeeze on it to make it go in. Until we got a clean floor around here, right? Yeah. Something poked me. All right, so this does not want to go in there. What a shocker. So, we got a couple options. We can chamfer a little bit to make it go in easier. It's going to catch on this lip in here too, which is going to shear it off anyway. Or we got to figure out how somehow we're going to squeeze it down. This thing is hard as a rock. And being cold is not helping it. Maybe that's why they left it out. Okay. Well, I'm thinking unless I put a little chamfer on there, it ain't gonna ever go. And it's definitely is cold. So warming it up a little bit wouldn't hurt. So if you keep finger fucking it, it'll eventually warm up anyway. All right. Um, Uh, probably just file, that's all we need to do. Put a little edge on it. The rubber's so old and hard, it actually files. <laughs> you can hear it. <laughs> definitely, definitely old and hard. Now we got a small chamfer on there. I don't know if that's enough to make it work. Let's find out. Let's go 
a little bit better than it did, but it's still still got to go in further. Be lucky if I'm not bleeding by the time this project's done. Okay, let's try something a little different. Ah, still poking me. I'm using the workbench as a pushing tool. in there. That's the one that goes on top. <clears throat> sure the other parts are in there where they belong. <clears throat> Look like they're in there correctly. Okay, so I'm going to go put some steady pressure on the press. Kind of let it work in a little bit. Slowly, I'm gonna bring the clip and my screwdriver. All right, let's go. See how that works. You can also use a vise. Press allows me to do a little more playing around than a vise does. The goal is not to make yourself bleed while you're doing these projects. First thing I do is flatten the tools out. Oops. A little flatter. pressure on there. Kind of wiggle around a little bit. It's going to have some spring tension on it. That's for damn sure. Spacer should come out, but it's probably got rubber jammed around it. There we go. Well, my fingernail a little bit. A little I have. There it goes. See the rubber in there. Doesn't look like it hardly sheared anything off. That's good. I figured we'd have more damage than that down to it. You know, I get something to push a little bit further in. Of course, I just put that back in. Shouldn't have done that. Uh oh, there's Fred. Fred the man's coming. Fred's back. See, Fred is alive, he's not dead. Fred, they want to know if you're dead or not. I'm not dead. 
You're not dead? Nope. You're just Fred? People get worried you're not around anymore. Alright. I'm going to push this in far enough to get the clip in. Uh, staying married. Uh, is that the problem? Oh, we went up to Sacramento and not Sacramento, San Francisco, and then same thing. Almost to Sacramento. That's in there a long ways. <coughs> yeah. There we go. I get the clip in there now. Another fun stuff. Yeah, the clip in there. How much rubber's in that clip? I don't know how much rubber is in that clip. We're in the groove. Did you clean it out before you... About that much. I had those... I thought I pulled those damn clip the... Uh... I'll be back in a minute. Alright. There's some more. That snap ring groove is a sharp ass edge, so it shaves it off as it goes in. So you make sure you clean the groove all out real nice, like that. You should be able to put your clip in there without any problem. Assuming I got in there deep enough. is in there but it is they're gonna work on some more clip is a tight tight fit in the groove all right see nothing to it just falls together see you didn't believe that did you Okay, let's see what the problem is here. We have more, more junk in the groove. Doesn't seem to be. The groove seems to be fully grooved. It's just the snap ring is bigger than it needs to be, I guess. Tuning on that groove. So I'm going to take a little bit of a punch and just lightly hit on it and make sure it is fully seated. So, yeah, might be a figment of my imagination. All right, well, it's beat in there, so hopefully, it's in there more. Now, the seal is about a 30 thou deeper than it needs to be, but there's so much pressure on everything, it doesn't want to push it out. It rattle. So if I push on the cup, it might be able to push it back the other way a little bit. Alright, 
so now we gotta try pushing this in a little deeper. Didn't make any difference. Still not moving. The phone ringing again today. Off the hook. Hello. Okay, just a second. Okay, that moved it all the way to get a clip now. All right. All right. Enough interruptions. We're back at it. Okay, I went ahead and put this back in here. Make sure it all works. So you can see how the spring tension in here works like it's supposed to. So that means everything fits in there correctly. You can see how the where the rubber sits up inside there on the push rod when it's installed. It's nice and snug on the push rod. <sighs> nice and snug. Some break-in miles may be required. Okay, so now I got to go ahead and get the high gear up in here and put this thing together. that down on there first. Probably should put a little bit of lubricant on here. Get the camera back on. Well, it's supposed to be working today. Well, it's supposed to be working. Yes. Is that really what a concept? We don't do it very often, but every now and then we pretend to actually do something, and then every now and then, that, partially of that time, we actually do do something. Mm -hmm. The trick is I have to figure out to get paid for all the time I'm not working. Because well, that'd be a lot of hours I could get paid for then. Holy crap, you'd be rich. I would be rich, yes. <laughs> you could quit work. You could retire and not have to work at all. I could you film. Paid for doing nothing. I could film all the time if I didn't have it, to pay the bills around here. Half the freaking country wants to get paid for doing nothing. Yeah, I would start charging like a dollar a video. I'd be a millionaire then. 2000 that'd be, yeah, you'd be. Instead of making a dollar every video, other month. Two times 2000 that'd be 20000 yeah. How much? $20,000? A dollar. We want to get maybe ten dollars a video. Then be ten dollars a video. I think my viewership would drop at ten dollars a video. Mm. Okay, a buck a video would be nice. A buck a video. I think that'd be too much money. Any kind of money would be better than what you're making. I now. think a penny a video would be more than I'm making now. So, because mm. nobody pays for videos anymore. People are too it's cheap. Stealing. They want everything for free. Oh yeah, I can't believe how bad that car is. That thing's a piece of crap out there in front of my shop. I can't believe you went out there and worked on it. I didn't work on it, I just looked underneath you it. You looked at it, that was enough It does work. have a, bad, a good CV. I thought the CV joints were bad, but they're okay. It has CV joints actually in it. Okay, that's a plus. There you go. More goop. More goop. This is called goop. Now, do you think this is actually going to go together without no. having a complete coronary as it goes in there? No. Well, you, you suspect it's going to be a problem? I suspect it's going to be... Yeah, I, I kind of got the same feeling. <laughs> but you never know, it might look out, it might go right in there. There's an extra roller right here too. We didn't need that one. Rollers, we don't need that, did we? Did no, I count? think I got them all in there. Did you count how many It looks like they're all in there. They're laid over a little bit. It helps if they go straight. They fit in better. No, I think they're all in there. Uh, it appears they're all in there. 
I think a jack thief outside. Okay, so now we got to put this all in here. This is the fun part. And how are you going to see that? You were supposed to be filming. What just fell up? Oh, I just lost my washer. I have to figure out how that goes back in. How did that fall? Oh, that one fell off over there. Now see, that's going to mean... Now we don't know how this washer went on, but see, luckily I remember how I put it in the first time. Same way I had it the other time. Okay, so now all of this has to go up in here. And somehow my fat little hand has to fit up in there too. Why don't you go up from the bottom totally from the bottom instead of that? Here's the one in. Mm. Appears that the bearings are not falling down either, so that's a good sign. There's grease in there, but the bearings are all in there. So it appears I actually didn't screw up. I did it right. All right. See, Jed, uh, Fred, I can actually do something. So make money. Make money. No, it was free videos. You here to steal my tools again? No, I don't steal. I. What are you looking for? He said 22. I don't have a metric. What's metric? Right, inch and five sixteen. Top of the toolbox is metric on the very front row. Oh. Don't hold your breath on there being much in there though. Because we don't deal with metric. Deep socket too. I don't have deep. Go check Fred's toolbox. He has a lot of stuff. Look at that. He's right in there. That's inch and an eighth. Right. But three quarter pops up. Because oh, we have interruptions here. Sorry. Alright, back at it again. Another hour or something, an interruption. Okay, where'd I leave off? Let's see. I got the counter shaft in here. Got the ratchet mechanism all lined up for the kicker. So now we get to put the main shaft assembly in here. It came out as an assembly, so it can go right back in there as an assembly. Should just slide in there. There we go. Oop, there it goes, it popped in. That's good. A little bit of grease over here, just in case it spins without oil on it. Oil on there, grease, I mean. Grease up the counter shaft where it rubs up against the bushing there. Alright, so that should be good. Okay. Everything's in there like it should be. Ooh, every dog is engaged, nice. Okay, it all rotates. Okay, now it's just a matter of putting the trap door or the side cover on here. Now, where's that washer that was missing before? Oh, shit. Okay. I forgot something. Okay. You don't forget to put the rubber in there where it belongs. It's kind of important. Okay, I'm going to put the push rod. I'm going to use the push rod as an alignment tool and as a kind of a holding fixture also. Ah, there it goes. Okay, so now we're going to take our rubber. Stick it in here on top of the push rod. Stick a little grease on it. A little 
grease on the second gear retaining plate too over at it. Doesn't hurt to lube this stuff up. Okay. Now the push rod is going to allow this to go right in there and put the rubber in there where it belongs. And we'll just do everything one more time. Okay. And it works correctly, so that's a good sign. All right, so there you go. That almost screwed up. Go ahead and pull this out. There, it's in there good. Okay, now we go ahead and put the cover on here. I use our gasket cinch. Everybody wants to know what I use. It looks like rubber cement, but it's not. Yeah, it looks like the same shit. So I'll cut that out for you. What side do you need? It's the uh, right side. Okay. That's getting old. What is it? Gasket cinch. Oh, cool. That's how I like it, nice and thick. <laughs> to me, it's old. <laughs> What'd you say? You need a 130 80? On what? Your front tire. Just whatever stock tire is on road okay. turd. Stock Harley. Yes. Alright, I'm gonna get out of here. Alright. Good to see you. See you later. Yeah, and then uh, what day you want me to disassemble that? Friday? Is that what you're uh, thinking? Whenever, I'll be working, so it doesn't matter. Alright, well, I'll come in. Alright, take care. Be safe, man. Alright, see you later. Yes, sir. Good layer of goop on everything here. All right. Okay, this is our counter shaft rubber. It's got to go on here. Helps if you don't forget it. Right here. Now, if you stick it right on top of the mid bearing here, it usually jams in the bearing and causes problems. I usually do it differently. Damn it. Well, that's a problem. The gasket's kind of swiveled up on me because it was sitting out for a couple hours and now it's too short. It'll stretch though, but it's not happy about it. Now I'm get too many interruptions. Okay, what I do is I take the rubber and I stick it inside where it belongs in the bushing right here. 
and you shove it over the shelf as a unit. Put a little lube on here also while you're doing it. And if you're lucky, the O-ring goes in there without tearing itself all up. And we'll see. Rubber doesn't want to go on, so we're going to rotate the kicker a little bit with pressure on it. If you don't want to go too far with the kicker, it'll disengage on you over there and you'll be screwed. Yeah, typical rubber, it doesn't want to go on. Everything's tight. Okay, let's get this in here before them. these won't go in. I said the gasket has shrunk up on me a little bit, so it's a little doesn't just go together like it did before. Be the new stud because it won't go in the hole either. Yep. Nice. So you make changes and Everything starts screwing with you. It evenly so it goes down evenly. And looks like it's down about the height of the screws now. Yep. So now we can use the screws as the force it in the rest of the way. And we're not using a hard hit, it's just lightly tapping around. We have a lot of things that are different than what it was mocked up. <clears throat> we now have the dialing stud in here. We change out this one stud that's real tight instead of being loose. And the gasket shrunk up a little bit. And we got the rubber seal in here. And all of these things are causing issues. And we also put the push rod seal on the other side, which is putting more pressure on everything. So everything's kind of fighting us a little bit right now. And I also want to make sure these gears are free under here before I start forcing it. 
So they are, so we should be good on that. So I'm going to go back to tighten this up a little bit. Screw missing somewhere. There it is. Thought I had all the screws in there already. I didn't. Now it's too late. The gasket's too far down. Have to push through the gasket a little bit. Yeah, the gasket has to have moisture and otherwise it shrinks and sitting outside here for three hours is just too much for it. Okay, right there. Make sure the gears rotate here. Disengage them. Okay. Things rotate so we're not bound up. So we'll go ahead and finish torquing everything down. And these over here don't have any locking device on them. So we'll use just a little bit of Loctite. Shouldn't have to put anything on them, but it doesn't hurt. Key drops is all that's needed. So now the studs want to spin, they don't want to tighten that at all. Figures. See, now everything's going to fight with me because it's final assembly. So nothing wants to work correctly. So, in order to put this together correctly, we're going to put the cover on here. Now I can pull the can of side cover all the way down. Great. Typical deal. They, they take a jump nut that's all damaged and they make it look like new and don't fix anything. There's no way of putting a damn socket on it without working on it. Fits in the socket.
It looks like crap though now because it's all piled on. Put some good torque on these. And it's torqued. <clears throat> Adequately torqued. Maybe. Loosen that one up. Yep, still tight. Tight. All right. And of course, now I'm kind of jammed up a little bit. There we go. Freed up somewhat. We don't have any bearings in here yet, so we'll deal with that. Okay, so now I got to tighten all these screws up here, but I can't do it with a cover on, on all of them anyway. So we use a hammer end pack to do this. So you get one moment, a little bit of movement. You hit the same hardness and if it quits moving it's tight. So I did three out of the five there. Okay, the cover's all pulled in evenly, so now we're gonna go ahead and take this cover off. Jeez, that one got real tight. Make sure this is still tight. Nope, it loosened up. <clears throat> it's a double ended stud, so it's free to get tighter on that side. Yeah, damn it. You see, it's not staying tight. It's just going to screw on me today. That's what's going to happen. So this one will tighten because it just spins in a hole. So now I'm going to try to make it tighten up where I can do it. So just like I put the studs in there, I got to double nut it. Tighten it up. Hold it over here and tighten it. <clears throat> Let's do the same thing. If you don't have this nut tight against the shoulder, it can leak down here because it's loose. It's because the two nuts make it tight, doesn't mean it's tight there. 
It's two different things you're tightening on. One works against the other, so you got to make sure you have the stud tight before you move on to the other to the outer cover. I'm going to try this on this one. Okay, so now these are very tight against the shoulder right here, so that keeps it getting snug. Okay, this is relatively loose here because I don't have it pulled down yet. I want to make sure the kicker works. Now there's no rubber pulled up off of the um, oh, the kicker in here. If you saw a bunch of rubber pieces in here where it's torn, then that means the rubber that was inside of here that I put up inside of there is now not working. So having that like that means it's in there correctly. But I got to put the bearings in here before I can make sure all this stuff in here is correct. Yeah. A whole bunch of little pieces have to go together and everything has to work correctly or you got issues. Okay, I'm to make sure the kicker at least rotates freely. Okay, it seems to be working freely and correctly, that's good. It's not bound up at all. Okay, now I can go ahead and put the bearings in here. And this time I have the washer on the outside where it belongs, instead of on the inside. See, I never did clean all these rollers off yet. Okay, so let me go clean these off. And get these all cleaned up and we'll be right back.